Uh... Good mornings, but uh, we must begin at some point. And so here we are, the second Sunday after Epiphany, this Martin Luther King Jr. Sunday, and welcome to our church this morning. Are there any other words of welcome or announcements for us to share with one another this morning? <clears throat> of course, if you do have something to share, please unmute yourself and then share. Don't everyone speak at once here. <laughs> Well, I know that oh, Amanda yeah. Lod has a new COVID-19 slide for us, and maybe when she brings that up, Deborah, if you would like to talk about how the numbers are doing. I just unmuted for that. So um, numbers have dropped significantly. Oh, I'm trying to get my thing. Out. How do I do it? I don't know. There. We've gone up just a tiny little bit since our low point and um, our recent low point, but it's fairly flat. So it's good news and we hope we can stay at that level. And once vaccines become more widely available, um, that number will, will have a steady decline and a permanent decline. Remember the orange line at the bottom is where we want to be um, percentage wise in order to have in-person worship services. Thank you, Deborah. And thank you, Amanda Lod, for continuing to put things in graphs for us who are statistically uh, unable to read numbers on a page sometimes, so. Uh, myself, I'm saying that as myself, no one else included. But, uh. Are there any other words of welcome or announcements to be shared with us this morning? Then let us begin and center ourselves as we listen to this moment of reflection, which gives me an opportunity to remind us that today playing for us is Kathy and uh, and the microphone, of course, is Diana. And behind the scenes, you have the, the Romaine family plus Amanda Lodd helping out to run things today. So trying to train in new people here, I think, is what we're trying to do. So <clears throat> I just did remember one announcement. And uh, this is something that we need to do for all of January birthdays. But I believe it was just someone's birthday in January. Was it not Kathy Peterson? Friday was her birthday, yeah. And I know that we have other birthdays in January. So I think we should, as we traditionally do, sing happy birthday for all of our January birthdays. <laughs> I can't believe I almost forgot to mention that. So um, we should celebrate those joyful, joyful events. And now let us indeed prepare ourselves and center ourselves for worship with this wonderful moment of reflection.
And now let us continue with our worship and join in our call to worship. Printed in your bulletin, our words will be on your screen. God of our ancestors and God of our dreams, we gather today to remember that you created us all in your image and in your likeness. And so we have the courage to dream the impossible. We remember how you spoke into the darkness and created light. And so we have the courage to dream the impossible. We remember the ways you delivered your people through trials and tribulations since the beginning of time. And so we have the courage to dream the impossible. Our God who grants us courage to dream, who has been the guiding light along paths of hope and love. We come longing for a beloved community where all are equally seen and radically loved. And as such, may we still have the courage to dream the impossible. Let us now join in our prayer of invocation together. God of all creation, we pray that in this moment you would strengthen us to continue to labor for the fulfillment of the dream that the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. so eloquently laid out on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. We pray that every valley would be lifted up, every hill and mountain made low, the rough places made plain, and the crooked places made straight, so that the glory of the Lord is revealed. Let your love guide us to see one another as fully human, regardless of color, creed, or culture, that we would respect one another for the content of their character and see the divine in one another. Let your spirit strengthen us for today and forever, however long it may take, until all God's children can say with full conviction, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. Amen. Our opening hymn is Just As I Am Without One Plea. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3 through 5. It's in the Methodist hymnal number 357. Words will be on your screen or in your hymnal packet. Verses 1, 3 through 5, Just As I Am Without One Plea. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood would shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to And indeed, let us come just as we are, just as we enter in, just as God created each of us to be. And in so doing, let us join in the peace that that offers us, 
the peace that we can pray up and lift up to one another, the peace that it takes all of us as one piece of the whole in God's peace. Let us now share in this moment together as we pray for one another and for our world. And let all God's people say, Amen. <clears throat> Our prayer of confession is printed in your bulletin. Our words will be on the screen. Let us now join and repent of our sins. Blessed Savior, you have called us by name. You will not let us lounge in bed. You wake us up in the middle of the night to remember how you call us. You will not let us hide under the tree. You summon us from the shade to be forever changed. You will not let us bury our secrets within the earth. You unearth our fears and speak them aloud so that they no longer haunt or ensnare us. And in so doing, our sins come to bear and we seek your grace. Forgive us, O oh God, when we cannot speak. Reveal to us the words we lack and give us the courage to live as Jesus Christ called us. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Our words of assurance are normally something that I offer us as an assurance that we can all join in that God has indeed forgiven our sins and graced us through the love of Jesus Christ. In planning for today, I thought what better way of doing this than singing a hymn of grace, a hymn that maybe many of you have not sung in quite some time but is a wonderful hymn to remind us just how much indeed we are loved. So let us join in Jesus Loves Me. It's in the Methodist hymnal number 191. Our words will be on your screen. Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Our scripture readings this morning will be read to us by Julie Watuki. Thank you, Julie. The first scripture reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. 
At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Our second reading is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 18. O Lord, you have searched me and know me, known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sun, sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. This ends the reading. <clears throat> we now, thank you, Julie, again. We now come to our children's message, right? The slide before this. Okay, children's message time. Sorry about that. We'll get to our hymn in here in just a second. But children, would you please come forward? I may have had the slides out of place in the, in the program, as, as we say. Please announce yourself, and you guys can stay back there in the church, but uh, those over Zoom, please announce yourself and, and uh, say hello to everyone. Hi, I'm Prescott. Hi, I'm Madeline. Hi, I'm Ayla. Well, welcome, children, and good morning. How are you all doing today? Good. Good. You all have done very well at the children's messages over the last many weeks, and I wanted to talk about a much easier subject today and hope that we can just be inspired to indeed dream impossible dreams. Have you both, you all know that you have Monday off of school for a specific reason, right? Yeah. What, what is that? Martin Luther King Martin. Jr. Day. And do you know who the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was? Yes. He spoke for the black people to give them freedom. Yeah. Very good, yeah. He was a reverend and a uh, speaker who was uh, civil rights, I like to call him prophet for his people uh, and for indeed all people. And what was his most famous speech? The I have a dream speech. The I have a dream speech. And do you know what 
Dr. King's, what the Reverend Dr. King's dreams were? Have you ever listened to or watched the I Have a Dream speech? Yes. Yes. Can you remember some of those dreams? That his children would be equal to others. Yeah, that his children could play with other children and all children could play together. That everyone would be treated equally, no matter their color or race. Right, that everyone could be treated equally, no matter their color or race. That the laws that we have in our country would be upheld as they are written in the Constitution. That all people are created equally. Well, you all definitely nailed a couple of the big ones, and I don't want to go through the whole speech here today. I would encourage anyone who hasn't watched it in a while, or even you children, if you haven't watched it in a while, to go ahead and watch it again because it's a good reminder um, because inequality still exists. But I want to just read the closing paragraph to Dr. King's speech for us this morning, where the Reverend Dr. King says to us all, and when this happens, which means when freedom rings from every village and every town, and when his dreams can come true, when we let it ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black and white, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. And so I want to inspire you children that when you see injustice, that you would speak truth to it that if you see things that are going wrong in your world, that you would call even us adults out and that you would dream the great dreams no matter how impossible they seem. Can you all do that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you. And let us pray together. Blessed God, in whom we place all of our dreams. Make it so. Make the dreams of the Reverend Dr. King come true. Make the dreams of our children come true. Make the dreams that we have on our hearts come true. As we dream of a unity, of an equality, of a faith that is lived out in and through us. And thank you, God, for our blessed children, that their future would be better than ours. It's in your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, children. <clears throat> well, let's sing a hymn now. Uh, <laughs> no matter where it is in the PowerPoint presentation. Um, but here we are in the garden. It's number 314 in your Methodist hymnal. And we're going to sing all three verses in the garden. come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me 
and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the Excuse me. Our gospel passage today comes from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. Hear these words from our gospel of John. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip <clears throat> and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite, <clears throat> in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please pray with me? Thank you, God, as we gather here today. Open our hearts and our minds and our ears to your word to your wisdom, to what you have for us to learn and grow and prosper as we go about our days. And as always, God, may our worship be pleasing unto you. Amen. <clears throat> I apologize, I have a little frog in my throat today. Today, I want to begin with a couple of quotes from, again, uh, Dr. King. But these are from a speech and sermon he gave called The Other America. And this was in 1967. You might recognize a couple of these, but there's one that's really important to us for today that I want to focus in on. And so let us begin with this Justice is indivisible. Justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And the other thing is, we've got to come to see that however much we are misunderstood or criticized for taking a stand for justice or for peace, we must do it anyway. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. The resources are here in America. The question is whether the will is here. 
Listen to that last line again. The resources are here in America. The question is whether the will is here. Dr. King asked this over 50 years ago in his speech. And yet, it's an appropriate question for us to again ask ourselves this day. This weekend, we remember it. This month of February, which is an awareness month for us of black history in America. The will. The will instilled at our creation, at our creator, by our creator, is the most powerful gift God gave us. Because the will is something we wield. It's something we control. It's something we can choose whether to use or not. And the will, the free will that God gave us, directly correlates to being and living and acting as those known <clears throat> as God's children, as Christians. For it is only when we use our will to recognize that we are known, that we then fully understand our creation. And subsequently then, when we fully know how God created us, from the moment that we were sparked into being, we must also then give ourselves over to the truth that all people were created by God. Whether we are like Samuel, who had not even known the Lord yet, and yet God called him. Whether we are like the psalmist, who is in awe that God knows us so well, knows every little intricate part of us, <clears throat> knows us from the very moment of our creation. Or whether we are like Nathaniel, and we cannot possibly think Anything good can come out of, you name the place, uh, Packer, fandom, uh, you know, just to name one maybe. I don't know. Our Christian faith is all about will to choose to be known, to recognize within us that we are, as the picture on your screen demonstrates, sparked by the hand of God. And our Christian faith right now is in a great moment of debate which hinges on our will to be known, which asks us a great question. Do we really want to be known at all? Now, I think we all long to be known and understood and in my human construct, I also think that God longs to be known and understood. But remember, in order for us to live into that, to choose that, to use our will to lift ourselves up, we must also lift others up as well. When God calls Samuel, Samuel doesn't say, here I am, Lord, but I don't know about anybody else. I just want it to be me. No, Samuel says, here I am, servant of the Lord. When Jesus speaks truth to Nathanael and tells him that good things can come out of all places, especially Nazareth, when he tells Nathanael that he knew him before he even saw him, does Nathanael walk away and go home and say, no, nope, I'm not going to believe this Nazarene? No. He is awestruck. He is amazed. And his faith is rewarded with getting to see sights beyond sights. In the awesomeness of trusting in our God that we hear from our psalmist. Our psalmist is crying out because the author has understood at their core that every bit of me is God made. 
from the color of my skin to the place where I was born to the single hair on my head. And no matter where we go or where we hide, God is there knowing us. So why does this matter? Why does it matter so much that we're known? Why does it matter so much that we use our will for good? Why does it matter so much? Because just as we trust and believe and have faith as Christians that we are God's, this is a call for us to get up out of the bed, to get up and out of the shadows, to not look down upon someone who may be different from us or some place that we might not possibly think any good can come from, but that we are called, you and I are called to be the change makers. We are called to get out and get up and to write our future into the fabric of our being. We can will it to make it happen according to the free will that God gave us. We, while we still have breath, can rescue our Christianity from the brink of the destruction or this destructive path that it is on. From the lips of those who only seek to use the name Christianity as an organization tool for hate. We can rescue our Christianity and remind the world that Jesus Christ came in love, he lived in love, he died in love, and was resurrected for us out of God's love for our being known. We can use our will to humbly save our world and to come nearer to God in that creative moment that God spark that is within each and every one of us. Whether we agree with them or not, whether we look like them or not, whether we think they know God or not. For as the old hymn says, they will know we are Christians by our love. That is our will. Justice is indivisible. Justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The resources are here in America. The question is whether the will is here. I pray today that you know you are known by God. I pray that we can all use our will to welcome all God's children into this loving embrace. That we could indeed, as in the words of the Psalms, be awestruck at the splendor of our God's eternal love. Will you please pray with me? God, we come here today We come here today longing to be known and longing to know you. When in fact, indeed, God, if we just look inside, if we use that will that you placed there at the spark of our creation, we would recognize you within each and every one of us. We come here today with a deeper purpose also, God, on this weekend where we remember the work of a prophet whom you sent to our world, who spoke truth to the injustices of his day and indeed still speaks truth to the injustices of our day. For inequality exists still. Whether it is color or creed or wealth or class or region or age, there are barriers that we must break down, God. There are walls within our society that prevent us from truly embracing your call to love. We pray, God, that you would inspire us through your Holy Spirit 
that you would fill us with the strength and the courage to speak truth to injustice, to speak love to evil, and to be your hands and feet to this world that needs it now more than ever. Our nation is dividing over false alliances, over false truths, over parties and politics, over religion, over greed. God, we need you to answer the call, to answer our dreams, to do the seemingly impossible, and to heal us once more, to unite us once more under the loving umbrella that is our creation and being known in you. God, inspire us that when you call out to us that we would answer, here I am, servant of the Lord. Here I am, the one that you have called to act justly. Here I am, the one you have called to love my neighbor. Here I am, the one to walk humbly as yours. And that you, God, would strengthen us on our journey would grant us peace when we think we have failed. That you, God, forgive us when we do fall down and stumble. And that you love us into getting up and going forth once more. Indeed, God, we want to spend all our time with you in that great garden where you walk and talk with us and like the old words say, we tarry there with you. But you call us for something more and send us forth into your world. May all your people, God, use all the resources we have to bring about your will and your way and your love in our world. And yet we come here today with worries and concerns, perhaps joy and celebrations on our heart. So I want to open it up. Are there prayers of the community for the community? If you do have a prayer, please unmute yourself to share. I offer up prayers for a safe week um, at the White House, at capitals and other government places around our nation that are feeling on the edge, dealing with <clears throat> the angst of a many Americans and that we may not be united this week yet if we could find a soothing balm for the anger that is among us all. Make it so, blessed Jesus. Are there other prayers of the community? A prayer of thanksgiving for the ministerials uh, letter and you taking the lead and writing that. Thank you. other prayers of our community. I want to lift up a prayer of joy in the spirit 
that I felt as we gathered for an hour of prayer on Friday morning. I know many of you could not be with us, and you joined us however you could, but thank you for those who were there and the prayers that we offered up, for I know our world heard them. And prayers for all the happy birthdays in January. And all the times of the year, but, you know, it's January, so for January. Other prayers of our community? Then let us join all of our prayers in our silence while we pray for God to reach those places and to be known to us where words cannot reach, as we pray silently now. And let us join all of our prayers together in that prayer taught to us by our Savior. Our Savior, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Glory forever. That's what we pray every time we pray that prayer. And part of God's eternal glory that we get to live out on earth is how we give during our holy offering. Our holy offering is holy because... We need monetary resources to pay bills and keep a church going. That's true. And so if this is the time when you would write that check or send that cash into the plate, then please still do. But glory also comes through prayer. Prayer is lifted up as a holy offering for our church, for our city, for our state, for our nation, for our world. And an offering is also holy when we wake up and answer to God's call, answer to that knowing within our soul and say, here I am, your servant. And so God, be with us in our holy offering and let us indeed give as we feel, as we, feel we can. And let us indeed praise God, from whom all blessings flow as we join in our doxology together. Praise God from 
home all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, who's far up Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please join me now in our prayer of dedication. Oh God, you offer us wonderful gifts. And in return, in these offerings, may your world change. May we bring the need of our neighbors to light. May we move beyond our fears. May our offering begin to heal, begin to mend, and begin to unite. That all your creation could live in harmony and in the hope of Christ. Amen. Amen. We have a closing hymn, which I'm not sure whether we've ever sang here before or not. It's called uh, Thumamina, I'm guessing, but I'm, my West African is not so good. But translated it is, Send Me, Lord. And Diana and I are going to sing through the first verse for us uh, once, and then we will begin again with verse 1 and do 1, 2, 3, and then go back to 1. And it's a cappella, so just join as you feel called to sing these words. Send me, Lord, send, send me, me Jesus. Jesus. Send me Jesus. Send me Jesus. Send me, Lord. So that's how it goes. And Diana will introduce the next line to us each time before we go in. So here we go. Send me, Lord, send, send me, me Jesus. Jesus, send me Jesus, send me Jesus, send me, Lord. Lead me, Lord, lead, lead me, me Jesus. Jesus, lead me Jesus, lead me Jesus, lead me, Lord. Fill me, Jesus, fill me, Jesus, fill me, Lord. Send me, Lord, send me, Jesus, send me, Jesus, send me, Jesus, send me, Lord. We have called to be sent, and so let us indeed go forth, brothers and sisters. Let us indeed go forth knowing that we are God's beloved, knowing that within each and every one of us we are known, and using our God-given gift of free will to choose to love one another. So that indeed, in the immortal words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., all God's children could sing, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Amen. Amen.